Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we're going to show you how to pass a raise in to a store procedure from the Power App. So stay tuned. Power Apps works easily with things like uh, store procedures by using things like Microsoft Power Automate. However, sometimes things get a little bit awry when you have more complex store procedures. So, for example, in this application here, uh, Power Apps works great if I pass a single value into a store procedure. But what if we have a multi value array? So, for an example, in this application, I built a really simple application to essentially go through and multi select a list of projects that I want to deactivate or activate. So, as I, as I select these three items in my case from a combo box, uh, if I want to deactivate those projects, I'll hit change status, and then I want to see those change, that, that status change over here. So, Store procedures accept single parameters very easily in store inside of SQL Server or, any, or Oracle. But what if we want to do a more complex system like this combo box you're seeing above me now? Well, this could be done, of course, with things like patch statements. But uh, in many cases, you might have a more complex situation that you want to that you want to do inside of a store procedure. So let's go over to our uh, our SQL Server here and find out a few things about how we're going to build this out. So let's start really basically here. So let's go ahead and get rid of my face here, so you can see all that. All right. So what I've done so far is I want to declare an input input store procedure as our input uh, variable, and I made it to var car max, which basically means it can take as much as I can pass to it. Uh, and here is the the the, the uh, format of how I'm going to format this JSON. So this is a JSON coming in from Power Apps ultimately. And so it looks like this. And if I were to do a select star, as you can imagine, it looks like this. So we want to ultimately make this a little bit cleaner to where I can use this as a data set. And so this is what my data looks like uh, behind the scenes. Also, I have the active flag on and off for certain things. So to do that, what we're going to do is, 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 is kind of structure this a different way. We're going to use something called Open JSON to make T-SQL a little more friendly to things like Power Apps. So let's just kind of take a, take a step back here and see step by step how this will work. So if I were to go and say select star from Open JSON and pass in that input parameter that we have earlier, let's see what it looks like. What we're seeing down below is an array of of my data. So we're seeing it has each one has a has a row ID, and we're having a, a it's all typed properly here as also. But I really want to see these. So I, I basically have flipped this right here into what we're seeing down here. And so my, my row has become and my column has become uh, individual rows. So now I want to structure this a little bit better to where I can see the data in a more well formed manner. So to do that, let's go ahead and select star. So we're going to take this and I'm going to get that project ID out. But you'll notice that when I do that project ID, it says I can't find that column. So we have to tell it what's inside that this uh, this array that we're passing in. So we can do that with the with command, and the with command will actually specify what's inside that JSON. So we'll say I have an integer column that is a project ID. Now that I've done that, if I run it again, you're seeing my project IDs. So to structure this and form this into a store procedure, let's open up one that's already kind of pre-built. Now it's a very simplistic one. I want to keep it very, very simple just so we can kind of get the concepts. But typically you're going to use this from some pretty complex uh, store procedures and business logic that you may want to kind of pass in multiple ways. So back over here again, let's go to our store procedure. There we go. So let me go ahead and take a, or just kind of hide this for the time being. And what we're seeing here is a store procedure. I'm saying, okay, I want to turn something on or off based on a list of uh, project IDs you pass me. And we're seeing the same code you saw before, but I'm basically saying, hey, give me uh, update all the projects and set uh, set them be true or false based on the project ID being in that array that we pass in. So if I simulate that now and just pass a few project IDs in, let's let's take a few of them out, like 11 and 12 maybe and 14. Just so you can see that it is working here. I'm going to run this store procedure. There we go. All right. So now we should see 15, 19, and 21 all being off. And we, I, I've already had a few of them on, on already. So you're seeing these 15, 19, and 21 are indeed off now. And I had a few of these other ones already off. All right. So now we're ready to go ahead and bring this into our application and onto our Power App now. 
So in Power Apps, we can simplify this a few ways also. So let's go back into our Power App and let's turn this button on right here, this Change Status button on, which is doing very little right now. But we want to see these three projects here turn off in my case. Turn them on in my case. Here we go. All right, to do that, let's go ahead and copy that out so we can use it later. I'm going to go to Actions and we'll turn on Power Automate. And I have the Power Automate already created, but I'll go ahead and create a new one just so you can kind of see it, see it uh, from, from the ground up here. All right, so if we hit that Power App button, I want to do off this, this action right here. So let's go ahead and hit New and make sure I'm in the right environment. Uh, I want to go ahead and do SQL Server and we'll fire that store procedure off. Here we go. And let's see, see if we have the right server here. We do have the right server, good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and fire off in this time card database a store procedure called change status, which is the one we saw a little bit earlier here. All right, we're looking for it. It's right there. It's going to ask for a few parameters here. So I'm going to tell it to go ahead and my first parameter is going to be the active flag. I'm going to ask Power Apps for that flag. And my second one will be, I'm going to ask Power Apps for that one as well. So what's happened here is it's reading the store procedure, finding out what data types we have, and then from that, it's now saying, okay, I'm expecting a yes, no from this, I'm expecting a, a big array from this, and it's letting us now pass that in. Now, if you ever change that data type, things get a little squirrely inside of Power Automate. So what you might have to do in that case is come back here and delete this top part right here, re-add it back, and then reset the, the parameters. Otherwise, what's going to happen is Power, uh, 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 Power Apps gets confused about data types, and it will not not refresh that metadata properly, at least at the current time of this recording. So let's go back here again. We are now ready here. Now, we should have named, changed the name of this, of course, so that way the, this would have a better name versus Execute Store Procedure. But we're going to go with this. We'll go ahead and, and change the name of this to just uh, uh, YouTube is fun, something like that, just so we can recognize it later. Some ridiculous name. And then let's go ahead and save it. With that now done, over here, we should see in a moment here, YouTube is fun. Let's go ahead and select that. It's going to then prep and, and uh, prep that and give us a, uh, it's now imp input it in, or import, import it in, excuse me. And we want to go ahead and tell it what we want to set to. So first of all, you see it wants the active flag first. So I want to see, is that true or false? We'll pass in that toggle value. Okay. Whoop. There we go. So we have the value, I hit, hit outside too soon. So that we have the value of that, and then we want the, uh, the list of stuff coming in from this project ID. So let's go ahead, and that's going to be my combo box, which is a terrible name, but you get the idea, dot, and we want the selected items, dot, and we want the project IDs from that. Now we can pass in multiple items, we don't have to pass in just one, but we'll pass in one, uh, just the one here in our case. And there's one more thing we want to do here also. Uh, you'll see, well, first of all, we have a little, little uh, warning right now. Uh, but we want to go ahead and pass in, uh, call it JSON. So it's going to convert what comes out of this into a JSON data set. So now what's happening is it's going to convert the multiple rows, flip them on its side. So now, we, now it's a single line of text. And we'll see what that looks like inside of, of Power Apps in a moment here. So hopefully, and we're also, let's go ahead also and put a refresh command so we can see on the left here. Now, typically speaking, inside of Power Apps, you don't have to use a refresh command a whole lot. But when you kick off flows outside and it's doing some kind of weird logic that, that Power Apps is unaware of, you might have to do a, a refresh command to see what the, uh, the outcome of that is. So I want these three items that I selected right here, Spanish, Dutch, and Klingon, to be set to true. Let me go ahead and hit the change status. There we go. Spanish should be set to true now in a moment. It's running that power app or that, that flow, and we now see that it is set to true indeed. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and set it back to false. So let me go ahead and set the false, hit the change, and we'll now see it go back to false now. So this is how uh, Power Apps can ultimately automate that process of having multi-selects. Now, where do you see this? You sometimes will see this where uh, I want to have a filter. I want to go ahead and say I only want to filter this gallery based on this, uh, these being true, and this being true across millions and millions of rows. Filtering that might be a way of doing that and, and changing all that status in one big foul swoop. Uh, you also see it when you want to change the status across millions of rows based on certain kind of filters also. So a patch can work, but when you have very, very complex requirements like, like what I just mentioned there, 
uh, the store procedure solution might work even better. So with that now done, let's see what the flow looks like. So going back to flow, we can go back here again and see what it actually got passed in now. I'm going to go back and there's our two runs we hit twice. So we can diagnose this by, uh, we can see what Power Apps first of all is sending in. This is what Power Apps sent in, an array like this. And then inside of my, my flow right here, you're seeing the product ID got passed in these three, three projects. So that's what that JSON command does, is it basically flattens the, flattens the array. Uh, so it becomes not an object, not a, not, not a table object, but instead a flat string like this. And it's already in well-formed JSON for the store procedure to now input. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this. It's a little bit more advanced session today. Uh, if you have want more information about this type of information, uh, we have our great classes at pragmaticworks.com, and we also build apps for other customers as well. Have a great day, and thanks for joining me today. And please also subscribe to this, uh, this channel by hitting the subscribe button down below. Have a great day. Goodbye.